I'm Johnny Knoxville. Welcome to Jackass. It's fucking rubbish. <laughs> Shit. D A N G E R F I E L D Dangerfield. All right, you bastards. So the missus has gone home, and I get back to my standard life of. What's the word I'm looking for? Misery. Misery and isolation. And what is what does misery and isolation give us? Creativity. So, uh, Jackass Forever comes out. And there's, there's, in fairness, there's something a bit ominous about that name because Jackass won't last forever because it's already 20 years old and it's... But I thought I'd give it a chance. So I remember work, I was working for a director. I was, I was writing a screenplay. Quite an interesting story, actually. I'll, I'll give you the short version. But um, he was... Um, oh, what was the bloke's name who married Madonna? Lock, stock. Guy Ritchie. So Guy Ritchie and this bloke, this other bloke. I, don't, I won't name the other bloke because it will win a bit tits up but um they they both cut their teeth in uh pop promos and this is how it tends to work not always but this is the sort of journey you, you cut your teeth making pop promos then you do a few adverts for television and then you make your first feature film so they both they but i think they, they were both uh they both cut their teeth there's a lot of teeth cutting going on here uh, and then they both went their separate ways to make their first um, movie. And uh, Guy Ritchie obviously done very well. I think it was Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, his first one. You might have heard of it. <laughs> Quite a successful film. The one that I wrote with my director, not so much. Not so much. In fact, my agent um, at the time said to them, no, you're in breach of contract until you give um, my client the... Um, it was about... Well, it was an $175,000 for the acquisition of the rights of the screenplay and 175000 for the services. And since, they had, since that was in the contract and since they hadn't paid me that, because... They were the producer and the director were a pair of pricks, um, and decided to shoot it all on hand cam. Blair Witch had come out, and and I was like, whoa, and it was all going to go ahead. I, my money was was like just round the corner. We had a meeting with the direct with the uh, the the executive producers, Serious Pictures in Notting Hill, and uh, they were like, you know, my my first lot of money after that was meant to be on the first day of principal photography. And that would have been about five weeks' time. They said, no, 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 no. No, you see, because in the contract, they want they want the say on the final cut. And uh, we're, we, we, we're not accepting that. And I was like, this is your first feature film. Do what you're told. No, you know, come and just do what you're told. They were like, nah. And then a couple of weeks later, after I'd been, after I'd written this, drafted this fucking screenplay about 25 times and gone through hell with a, 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 an idiot. The director was an idiot. I mean, he's still not making films. He's still making adverts and pop promos like 20 years later. But, um... Yeah, so he ended up. He, I remember one night he went. He look, let's let's not write. Let's not make the film using a script. Let's let's just make it. Let's live it. Let's live it. it, it make it more of a documentary. Let's live the movie. And I was like, no. <laughs> so that got shelved because they never paid me. Fuck um. Um. So that was my screenwriting career come to an end. However. It was somewhere around that time, you know, uh, when I was probably about 26, the, the VHS of the first Jackass movie, Jack... It's weird being English saying Jackass because it's Jackass. <laughs> um, 
and that was going around and it was you know it was very low production values it was skateboarding it was furries kicking the shit out of each other it was um putting your mate in a shopping trolley and slamming it against the curb and you know that video went round all of us i remember taking it to the french house in soho and giving it to someone and he give it to someone and it was it was hard getting it back and it caused quite a stir and of course a couple of years later when they took over mtv and, and they really did look into that story look into the amount of money <clears throat> excuse me the amount of money and freedom that mtv gave the jacass crowd um it is it, it's, it's quite incredible really and you know now they're household names johnny knoxville steve-o saw steve-o do stand up at the edinburgh festival not his strong point um and so here we are jacass forever 20 years on from that original tape, literally tape, VHS videotape. And uh, so this is my not, not Gonzo review of Jakar's Forever. This is going to be the gnarliest shit ever. The wait is over. So already, you know, already there's been a set of male genitals um, masquerading, or should I say parading, or a mixture of the two, masquerading, masturbating. They're not wanking it. There's no wank. There is, actually. There's a lot of spunk at the end. Fake spunk. Funk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Spake. And um, they're old men. Johnny Knoxville looks like your granddad. Handsome man, handsome man, he even has his bald spot sprayed out uh, in the in the intro. Um, you know, the production values have gone through the roof. Um, the slightly awkward, um, the slightly awkward sense that are you still doing this? Has it developed? Has it changed? Or is it a money spinner? Or will it be entertaining? And the, for after the sort of <laughs> introduction, you know, sort of intro, the first stunt always, always, always uh, confuses me at the beginning of Jacass and the various clones that they've been. Dirty Sanchez, uh, was that the Welsh one? The Welsh one was crap. Um, most Welsh things are crap. The Welsh male voice choirs are, are fantastic. Uh, coal mining, slate mining, very good. Uh, Welsh women on Saturday nights, uh, walking around semi-naked uh, with a bottle of vodka in their hand, they're good. But... At the beginning, they say, "Do not these stunts of uh, 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 performed by professionals. Do not attempt any of this at home." Oh, the only professionals because they'd done it and got paid for it. Were they professionals when they first done it? No, it's weird, isn't it? It doesn't make sense. Because if I, if someone, if I, if I said to someone, "I'll jump out that window," if you give me two hundred quid and we signed up a contract. And I jumped through a plate glass window and broke my legs and then put that on video. I, I'd put at the start, you know, this stunt was pawn, performed, pawned? <laughs> this stunt was performed by a professional. Don't try this at home. Well, I suppose it's some legal beagle. Eagle and, of course, Schmeagel from Lord of the Rings. So the first stunt is they've uh, ridden a motorbike and a push bike and a skateboard over a human ramp. And it's a couple of bits of wood. And instead of a couple of milk crates to keep it at its uh, desired angle, it's a stack of people, Johnny Knoxville and a couple of others. And it was uh, unentertaining. Unentertain, un it, it actually removed entertainment that was already in me from me. It's a Friday morning. I'm looking forward to the day. I'm interviewing my old art school tutor later on my channel. 
and uh, it, 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 it took away some plaisir. I, I'm clearly not the target audience for Jackass Forever, but maybe, who is? Who is? Because when that first one came out, I don't, the internet was, I, I don't, you know, the internet was very sort of, it weren't there. There weren't a lot of internet about. <laughs> it was dial up and all that. But, you know, when the first one came out and a couple of the second ones, you know, when you when you involve yourself in a, in a creative project, you know, you... you you, you, you get that sort of first one that peaks interest and then you get your funding and then you have your sort of creative burst and you have your creative burst, then it becomes a job, then you get a bit bored with it and then you sort of stop doing it and then later in life someone suggests, well, you know, maybe make like a 20-year special. Uh, but th this, this sort of stuff is all over the internet. People can watch this stuff all day long. You could, there's probably five, you could probably watch the kind of stuff that they do. That So, I mean, they've just been surfing a fat man down a, a water slide. <laughs> so who really is the audience for this? And I'll tell you something else it's reminded me of. Um, years and years ago, when I was at art school, we thought it would be a good idea to get a, a stripper in for my mate's birthday. Now, the art at art school should have already sort of put a spanner in the get a stripper in works because most times you get a stripper in for your mate's birthday or stag do or whatever. You're in the boozer, you're seven pints down, it's all good fun and... Uh, there was five of us sitting in a room, ripping B-loads, chain-smoking bifters, stoned. Just middle of the day, like Wednesday afternoon, and the tension when everyone started to realise what an awful idea this was. And it, it was coming. You know, they were booked. And I say they, and you'll, you'll see why. And it was awful. There might have been six or seven of us, but, you know, not a boozer full of people ready to shout and, and, and add, you know, joy and humour and fun to the situation. No, just a little gaggle of stay highs, sort of going, oh, fucking hell, is this actually happening? There was a knock at the door, and there was a bloke with the camera, the bloke whose company it was, because obviously they film it so that you get the video, and, uh, and the bird. And she was well hot, but when, when he come in, first thing he said, I, I remember Annabelle, she opened the door and he went, <laughs> he, look, as a waft of skunk sort of waft, uh, sort of nearly knocked him over. He went, <laughs> don't worry, drug squad. <laughs> and we were like, uh. And then this girl come in, he's pressed play on his portable um, stereo, ghetto blaster. And and then she just come in and, and she went, who's the birthday boy? And he was just like, and he was a really quiet bloke as well. We, he had problems around women. <laughs> Great. Now what, the, the takeaway from that, what was... What everyone remembers more, well, there's a couple of things, but what everyone talks about when we refer, when we remember that, when we reminisce of it, is the fake laughter. Because we were, it was just awful. We, it was so uncomfortable to be sitting in the front room of a student house, middle of the day, with this very attractive woman doing her thing. Some bloke, and he had a big sort of light as well, so it's a bit oh, fucking loser glare. And um, we were all going ha ha ha, and and when we watched the video back like a couple of times, it was a bit, you know, no no one, no enjoyment was had at all. And she put like um, marshmallows on her nipples and sort of said, "Come on, Jimmy, bite them off." 
and he sort of went like we really try not to get anywhere near her flesh and then she said right pick me up for the final shot now I imagine that she wanted him to sort of lift her up and hold her and sort of be going yay he fucking put her over his shoulder like a fireman's car <laughs> she was like proper winded but like I say the takeaway was everyone there just going ha 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 when's this gonna stop this is hell ha 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 because if we didn't do that we were gonna be going and there's definitely an element of that here you know the they know that as because you know there's a group of them around all of the stunts there's a group of them there now if they're not cracking up you know that that's them interpreting the event for you that's them telling you this is hilarious and and it's it's not convincing because they're men in their 50s and they've done so much of this and so far this is well substandard from the jacas sort of back catalog and they're cracking up at things that they know aren't really funny which is complicated for a funny <laughs> for a so-called funny movie if you're gonna be dumb you gotta be tough <laughs> now i was i was about to say off mate you know i'm about halfway through and Maybe I'm being a bit critical here, but I remember when I my, when I done when I was a stand-up comedian, my my breakthrough Edinburgh Fringe show was called Sex Tourist, and I'd 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 been clean. I've had a life of drug addiction, and I'd been clean for three and a half years, and I mean clean. I wasn't even drinking caffeine. I wouldn't even eat paracetamol. You know, I went the whole hog, and. Uh, I ended up, it's a long and excellent story, but I ended up relapsing on methamphetamine and uh, I got a couple of ounce of it, ounces of it stuck in my um, anal canal. <laughs> Is that what it's called? And uh, the, the show ended up being nothing about sex tourism. It ended, about, ended up being about me relapsing and all the dramas that happened there, including letting off a loaded Glock in a room full of uh, um, naked children and their prostitute mothers. But when i done that show, I was, you know, I really promoted it. You couldn't get a seat in that show and the, the queues were up around the, uh, you know, out of the building, around the streets. And I would talk to the people in the crowds beforehand, warming them up, really, warming them, like a pre-warm-up warm-up. And um, I remember I'd talk to a few people and I'd go, you don't look too excited about this. You know, there'd be a couple of people there, you know, sort of social justice warriors, you know, blue air, national health glasses, coming along to to not like it. And and, and I'd say to them, you don't look like you're looking forward to this. Like everyone else is having a laugh. You know, I'd sort of play the crowd a bit in, while they were queuing up. And I'll say, yeah, well, they'll say, well, we'll give it a chance. We'll give it a chance, you know. And the thing is about that, if, if you're funny, you'll break through that. If it's funny, you'll break through that. People can, people can turn up and try not to laugh, but... You can if you're if you can make them laugh, you know that that's what it's about. Because everyone is actually critical, because people go to gigs to laugh, and and if they don't, it's because you're not funny. I remember one old dear after a show said to me, "Oh, she went, oh, I had to try so hard not to laugh," and I was I thought, okay, <laughs> maybe next time just laugh. But so I don't think I'm being critical. I'm just not entertained by it. It's uh, you know I'm not going to tell you every stunt they're doing and every there's a lot of hitting each other in the bollocks uh, in this middle section. 
Um, but I don't think I am being critical. It's just, it's just, what made Jackass fun? What made it funny? What made it engaging? Was it was, we hadn't seen it before. And this, it, I know this isn't, but it, it it might as well be the cutting room floor. You know, they swept it all up and they put it together for Jackass, Jackass, sorry, forever. Um, they don't look like they're really into it. Like I say, there's a lot of that sort of fake, fake laughter. When get knocked down, we gotta get back up. If they trust us to go to the bathroom, they're less intelligent than I thought. In the drawer, but I know enough to know. If you're gonna be dumb, gotta be tough. You're still blowing people up. And Johnny Knoxville, Johnny Knox, I think it's fair to say without doing any research whatsoever, Johnny Knoxville has kind of uh, done the best. You know, he's done, he's, he's done well out of the whole jacass uh, thing. You know, he's the name people know. People know Steve-O, yes, but... You know, you, you kind of get the impression that Johnny Knoxville, well, he, he is married, he has got children. He's probably invested money, he's probably got real estate, he's probably got a portfolio. He's well known. And, and on this, he's kind of like, I'm getting the impression he's a bit of a master of puppets. You know, he, he ka-ching, ka-ching, oh, let's do a jackass forever and, and get all these blokes in who will work for probably a considerable uh, considerably less money than me you know he, he's uh he's kind of like he's got a goon squad that he can hurt and um i haven't actually seen him do anything um i don't think i've seen him do anything yet apart from tell other people um how to get hurt and that's kind of uncomfortable i mean i quite like him i like i don't know him I've seen him on other things, and, and you see him on plenty of other things, and there you go, you know, he's, he's made a career out of being, he's been in many films, he's, he's you know, has, has Steve-O been in many films, has Wee Man been in many films, has the unknown, unnamed others been in any films, have they been on covers of magazines? No. And that, there's something a little bit unpleasant about that. This guy's one badass dude, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'm on jackass. It's a Texas rat snake. Venomous? <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally, you can see other performers that aren't involved in the sort of main um, event, sort of in the periphery of the shot, looking very bored looking like people that have been doing this for 20 years have lost all interest in it, but need the money. Um, and it's quite weird because, you know, the, the people involved in it, which are just two or three feet in, like the inner circle, the inner sanctum, they're howling. It's the, the stripper, the stone stripper experience, nervous howling at the quite elaborate, expensive sort of set up to the the um stunt and then just two feet behind them there's a bloke just sort of looking off into the distance um wondering whether he's paid his taxes on time and i think i think a lot of the audience of this are going to be that person you know that that's I don't know what this is for, and it's it's a you know the irony, Jackass Forever. It, it you know this is it's like a eulogy. It's like no, it's like Jackass already, and that's a little bit disappointing. It, it you know it. It's disappointing because the early ones, they were passionate about it. They pushed themselves. They were younger. You know, they were, they were more 
there, there was more at stake in terms of look, this is this is growing. We're you know we're we're, we're household names. You know what else can we do? How far can we push this? And and in this one, it's just like oh, okay, we're gonna hit each other in the bollocks, and we're gonna get snakes to bite our tits and. I imagine this was quite a boring production to make. You know, this is this is the this is Jacars has become a um, a factory. You know, and this is this is the uh, what they this is this is you know this is just a production line of hilarious stunts performed by old men who do know better and have done better. And um, it's not very good at all. It's not good. It's uh, it's an earner. This is an earner. And I think if you put that question to them in an interview, like no one will, they'd probably agree. They they, they that that conversation has been had behind closed doors, without a doubt. Ring hello. Yeah, we're thinking of doing a like another jackass. No, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But you know, it's, they're so cheap to make. Go on, I'll I'll, I'll do you fifty thousand. I'll do you fifty thousand. Two weeks shoot. Yeah. All right, man. Nice one. Yeah, no, it'd be nice to see you again as well. All right, ta da, ta da. When I was a a teenager, I used to watch panel shows on, on telly, you know, comedy panel shows, presenter, two teams, and I'd just be blown away, amazed at how fast these people were, you know, they'd put a picture up on the screen and someone would just boom off the cuff, a, 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 a cracking line, I think, shit, that, you know, the comedy brains of these people are incredible. And that would go on for the whole show. The presenter would say something, one of the contestants would respond, some, and it was just like, the, the, these people are comedy geniuses. You know, they, 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 their, their thinking is so quick and, you know, unreal kind of performances and, and unreal performances exactly because, you know, as I, as I grew up, and as I found out about panel shows, a, a panel show is actually about 20 minutes content, right? Uh, it's usually filmed for about three hours. The contestants and the presenter are given the questions, the pictures, everything, a few weeks in advance. The presenter will probably have a team, Jimmy Carr or whatever, will probably have a team of about five, six, seven writers working on his lines the 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 people on the, on the uh on the teams depending on how high they are up the uh up the celebrity strata will have, they'll have writers working for them even if it's just one or two and so what you actually get is not comedy but theater this is rehearsed these jokes are rehearsed these the, this is a performance, it's theatre, which is a con. You're being conned, you're being presented, you're, you're being told you're getting one thing, but it's actually something quite different. And I'm getting that feeling from Jakars forever. You know, they, the, the stunts are real, for sure. Yes, that, that, treadmill is going very fast and when you walk on it as a brass marching band you're going to fly off but the bit beforehand the the, the build up is theatrical you know they're not they're not into it they're acting they're acting they're performing what came naturally to them 20 years ago <laughs> together, Pops. What's the worst that can happen? So bored. <laughs> so bored. 
about 30 minutes of this left. I don't know if I'm going to make it really. I don't know if I've got a lot else to say about it. Maybe they've saved the best to last. You said it wasn't going to feel like anything. I just need you to like sit with my grandpa. Just make sure he doesn't smoke. Oh, oh, oh. oh my God! A bunch of NASA scientists right now. Can I get a cold drink? Yeah. Will you make him an actual coffee, Stephanie? Here, I made you another one. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, it's just candid camera now. Candid camera, for those of you who are younger than 200 years old, was a, a TV show from about um, from the Middle Ages where they uh, done things in public to make the general public go, what happened? And a man took a poo on a, a toilet. Uh, I don't even know what it was. It, it was a totally unconvincing set up. There was, why, why there was a toilet in the middle of a park, I don't know, with no walls or anything. And then a jet of water blew him into the air. <laughs> That's great. That's <laughs> jackass forever. Feels like it. Fucking feels like it. Beatles about. Well done. Well done. For those of you who are um, younger than 50, Beatles about was a, a, a hidden camera prank show from the Middle Ages. Mm. You know, when I woke up this morning, I knew my missus has gone back to the province and it's Friday. It's not my most... Bi oh, where's my... Sorry, continuity issues. I I know it's not my most busy day at work Friday. It, it, it's really the start of my weekend. And uh, I remembered thinking, I wasn't going to review this. I was just going to watch it. Uh, one of my subscribers sent it to me and said, you might enjoy this. And I thought I was going to. And it's really disappointing. But maybe I just didn't think it through. Like I said earlier, who is this for? And I don't think there's an audience for this. I, I, I don't, as I've already said, you know, this stuff is, is everywhere online. They, they just dropped five gallons of pig spunk onto someone. <laughs> it seems to be the same three or four blokes doing all the really dodgy stuff. I mean, there are, you know, they are mixing it up a bit, but... The really heavy stuff seems to be the same two or three blokes, and I don't recognise them. That I don't recognise them. I don't remember them from before. But I, you know, I wasn't a big fan. I loved the first one because, as I explained earlier, I wonder if these blokes are just a bit skint. I wonder if they just needed the money. And old puppet master Knoxville said, well, "You know, come on, come on in." And uh, we'll fuck you up a bit and I'll give you some money. Oh, Lord. There was, there was one scene, something, oh, something wacky happened and Johnny Knoxville went really like that, like so theatrical. And there was a couple of people behind him going, ah! <laughs> Next stunt, something else wacky happened and Johnny Knoxville went again, again, done it again. Yeah, that's the response. Dude. I think we're all the way finished. We're through. Stick a fork in it! Well, they saved the best for last. Big finale. Loads of money spent on it. Loads of hardware, props, stunts. Big, multiple, multi layered finale. Fucking rubbish. It's fucking rubbish. <laughs> Shit. I'd like to offer you more of a... a, a denouement to this critique. But it's fucking shit. What a terrible way of starting my Friday. And it's sad to see these things go this way. And it's kind of inevitable because, you know, you have a hit, you rinse it, you rinse it until the money stops rolling in. 
And I think this will probably be that. So boring. We'll meet again. Don't know where. Don't know when. But I know we'll meet again some sunny day. Hello, I'm Johnny Knoxville. Welcome to Jackie. Three, two, one. Whoa! Fucking rubbish. Non più dry farfalon amoroso. Notte giorno di torno girano. Delle belle torbando al riposo. Ma ci sento a tuo giro d'amor. 